In this video, we're going to take a deeper look at creating meshes in Photoshop for Maya. I'm going to show you some of my techniques for edge flow and trying to maintain quads and just some of the things you can do to deal with really complex forms, shapes, and structures. This character was actually built all together and then I just kind of pulled it all apart. And the reason I did this is because I don't want a million materials, one for every single layer. So I kind of split it up into two groups, the body parts and the cloth parts, or like the, the bits that are a little less important as far as their structure. So I was a little bit looser with everything. I was going to use the linear mesh generation for these ones, but I decided just to draw a mesh because I'll be using cloth simulation on them potentially, or I might be rigging it. So I might want to have cleaner edges. So I went and drew it, all the meshes. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the body bits. Now these are a lot more complicated meshes and I just kind of want to show you the general idea around them. So we have like an outline, a closed loop outline, and I'll actually just show you really quick how these are done. Okay, before I started what I did is I control clicked the thumbnail image went select, modify, expand, and set that to 10 because I just wanted it just outside the boundary. And then I click this little guy here and that creates this new work path. And this is all the paths that will contain my curves. It's really important to have a fully closed path if you're going to start drawing a mesh inside of it. Now the hardest mesh pieces are these ones, are the, the main body pieces with all these little extensions coming off. I can tell you from experience that this takes a really long time to model. So typically what I do is I'll draw the core first, the main kind of the spine through the curve. This this is like getting, this is my proper edge flow that I want. So I want there to be a center line running down this whole thing. Like I said, this is a fairly complicated shape, but I don't have to get too crazy. It's actually quite fast. So I've drawn this, now I'm gonna control click and close that out. So now I've drawn my core. And then the next thing I might wanna do with this one is I'm going to go to my free hand pen tool by pressing shift P. I'm just going to loop in and loop out where these extensions come off. Just the main ones. I don't have to be too precise, but I, I try to hit it on the corners. I can either control click to end the curve adjustment or just, you know, start the next one. Well, I don't want to do that because that'll create like a weird face. Like you can do this stuff and just fix it later. It's not a big deal. There we go. So I don't, I'm not going to go into everyone, but this is essentially how I do those end pieces because these will become extrusions off of the main mesh. And then what I can do here is just quickly do some divisions here and then make sure I either put that like that so because this will turn into a triangle. Or the other option is, is like run another core through the middle and then put corner, corner. I usually try to run a core through the middle. It's not always necessary. There. And then division, division. Now this might collapse on that edge. So another option for something that's particularly bulbous is maybe do that. And you can always press shift A and grab this selection tool and move this down. And I can tell you again that this is a lot faster than drawing these meshes manually in Maya. There. There may be tools in other 3D programs that are faster than this method, but I haven't experienced one yet. So I'm not going to try to capture this like lumpy detail. I'm just going to put one line kind of at the high point because this is going to draw a straight line from here to here. If I want to kind of keep this a little bit here, I want to make sure to put a piece in because ultimately this line will get lost. So I want to see what that's going to look like. I can just click here and get the convert to point tool and click that. Press A and pull it up here. So just if I want to be careful about losing those dots, I don't really care because those dots aren't even really 100% supposed to be there. Okay, so that's how you deal with those. When it comes to the actual body, like I want to just talk about this really quickly. Let's say we have something like this, this tail piece. And I usually like to try to follow the form a little bit. So my first run through is kind of like imagining the structure as sort of like a 3D form or kind of thinking of like what, what the form is supposed to feel like. And then knowing that essentially if I press shift P, shift P one more time, I'm, this is these rounded edges, unless I add like another edge loop around down the core, they're gonna do something like this. Oops, control click, oops, control click. They're gonna do something like this, bup, 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 right? If I add another line down here, which I, I fully intend on doing, that runs, uh, whoops, control click, if that runs all the way up the b uh, the, ba the core here, this will help hold these forms together. I would probably do this with the freehand pen tool anyways. But so what I want to talk about really quick is expanding. So if we have this one here, now you see how the belly is getting fatter, we can either have the 
the polygons get very big, which might be desirable for some. This one, I think I'll let this be an extrusion off like that. But what I think I want to do, I'll come in here, is usually what I do is I'll pick a corner, a part where I can merge the, the vertice down with a triangle. Because if you make a triangle, and let's say you only want quads, you can always do that, and that'll become a quad of pieces. And if I want to keep going with this, I just click here. But for this, I would follow up here, maybe to that, because I kind of want this belly piece. And I want to I want to kind of get this flow going. I'm trying to get my first big strokes in. And this kind of helps me define the shape and what my priorities are. And then for like little extrusions like this, just like we did before, just grab that, put that there if I want, or I can move this one. It doesn't matter. It's, sorry, a vertex. So then I'm going to just dip in, go here. And then I can go like this. And then I can go, if I want, I can go like this to hold it together. But remember, it's going to go a triangle. So I might want to do all the way to the end like that and then just do that. And I can reshape that or do whatever I need to. Unless I'm planning on having like another one running down. But anyways, but that's kind of how I add so that I can have more polygons or more edge loops, let's say in the body, and then have that terminate at some point down the tail. So we'll go through and uh, you can take a look at some of the mesh in a minute, but that's just kind of how I, how I work with it. And the thing, the one thing I did on this body here too, is I actually created a circle because I wanted to follow the edge flow of the arm. And if I press, click here, press shift A, I can grab this and break it down. And then from here, Press Shift A one more time, which is like select the full thing. Control C, Control V. I can transform that and then enter. And then oh actually we could just control click the corners here. Start pulling it out here. So I can kind of do an edge loop that's coming out. Press Enter, press Shift A. Now I can kind of select this and do it this. And I can start building an edge loop out around this circular structure. So if I build up through the ribs, I'm going to cross out and come here, go through here and up here. And then this is going to cross through like this. So I can start understanding the structure. Now, it, it takes a little bit to get a hang of a hang of circles. But circles, if you want to do quads, you're going to want one row that like moves through the middle like this. And then you're you know probably going to want another vertical line. So that would be coming through here like this. And then it's going to branch out like this. And this stuff, this is stuff you'll kind of figure out as you go. I mean, this may not be the best way to do it. Sometimes I have to redo it a couple times. But see these corners? We don't want those to be triangles. We want them to be quads. So from here, I can draw out more. Well, actually, we probably want one here, like coming. So we'll do one here and come out through here. Come out. I don't know the best place. I'm just kind of I'm going as fast as I can here. Coming here. And then we want a corner piece here. And see, we're getting a little bit compressed. So here I can just move these around. I can use my pen tool P to like get rid of points if I want to. There we go. And then just start spacing things out a little bit better. And if I'm finding everything's a little compressed or I don't have enough, then I'll come in. So I don't have a lot of lines to work with. So one thing I'll do is I'll create new edge loops and those will just kind of, maybe they'll run around like this and come out the other side. So as you get better and better with your geometry and understanding geometry, this will all, all work better and better. And don't, you can always split something off like this too. Come through, if I need an extra face just to create this like piece here, sometimes I'll just come through this vertice and like connect right there. And even though it's a triangle, it's okay. Try to maintain quads if you can, but triangles aren't gonna kill you because these aren't full 3D meshes, right? So you can get away with a lot more with these kinds of, with, with these kinds of meshes. Another one here is for square surfaces. Ultimately with squares, you could go like this could just draw a quick little grid if you want to. Or another option that might lend to better deformation, like if you want to be able to like bevel it or something really nicely, I would suggest doing something like this. Find your, uh, maybe select Shift P to select your uh, polygonal pen part. Oh, control click to get rid of anything you selected. I'm gonna go around the border like this. And close it. And then, whoops, and then I'll do another one. Whoops, control, close this. Okay, and then I'll do another one. I'm not sure how many I'd actually need. I'm just kind of imagining maybe I want to give it a bit of a sloped stair steppy feel or something. But essentially to get to create proper edge loops, now what I can do is I'll now I'll come out from the corners. There we go. 
come out from this corner, control click, come out from this corner, and I'm just hitting these corners so I roughly come through them. These you'll be able to clean up anything later, okay? And I'll come through the middle like that, come through the middle like that, and then I'm going to come through the middle of this and come through here. There we go. Come through the middle like this, and this is how you can do circles too. Okay, and then here, here, there, 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 straight through, and there. So that gives you really some really good solid quads with a nice edge edge loop flow. It's kind of how you can work manually. The other thing with this one is maybe I want to make sure the glass part is has some separate geometry to it, so I could do some other more interesting things with it. Maybe create a bevel or something. So then I'll add some more geometry in here. Cool. And then from here I can do the same thing. Come up from the edges. Control. Oops, I did that wrong. Make sure your ed your loops are closed. There we go. Control click. So I come out from the edges. Control click. Come out from the edge. Come out from the edge. Come out from the edge. And then we can come through. I would delete these little extra guys here. I'm just having trouble deleting them in group selecting because I have an extra face of the finished mesh already. So we'll just stop with that right there. And you can kind of see what I did from before. And this can all be modified. But I kind of just went through and drew everything. And it took me about an hour now all of these meshes I'll be able to use inside of Maya. So you can also see here, I used um, circles to draw out from the eye because this is a very important structure. And then made sure that my edges followed along some of these structures here. And I, I might actually want to fix this here. So I'll go Shift A. So I've got this circle. I'm going to grab my pen by pressing P. And I'm just going to add some points along it. And this will allow me to press A. And then I can kind of just adjust things a little bit. Because maybe I want to be a little bit closer to this kind of edge thing here. It's actually really quite easy to fix and adjust things. I find anyway. I feel like this for me is a lot easier than pushing edge verts around, edges and verts around when distorting your UVs inside of Maya and then trying to like fix it. So I just want to make sure. So these are all going to intersect and these are going to create potentially like a weird spot. Because if our precision is really high, we could get a weird face in there, but it's really easy just to merge those together. But there, you can kind of see what I've been doing. There's some weird stuff here and there that might cause like, th like this is a little bit odd, this shape here. This will become like a weird triangle, so it'll probably intersect here. So I might want to bring this out, but this is all stuff we can play with after too. So this will be a straight line to there from there. Um, anyways, so I essentially this is finished. So what I did after that is I drew all of these and kind of went through and did this. Now this is, uh, none of it's, it's not all perfect, but it's good enough for now. And the other thing about this too is I can always add more geometry inside of Maya. I don't have to do it all here, but I can add one here. I'm gonna just do this here because this is fairly low. There we go, and click. There we go, it's closed up. And then we have the clothes, the cloth bits. So let's just see here, I'll show you the cloth bits. Now the cloth bits I was a lot looser on. So press A. There. So you can see I was pretty loose on them. It's not the best geometry in the world, but it doesn't really matter again because they're kind of the cloth pieces. And then the other thing I did for the light blooms is let's pull this up here. For these, I don't want to have to draw um, circles for all of this. I don't, I, I don't really care what the geometry is like on this because these are all going to be used as flat things. If I wanted to turn them into orbs, like spherical orbs, it would be worth drawing a very specific mesh for them. But I don't think I'm going to be doing that. And if I am, I can always add add those little those meshes later. It's not really a big deal. Like for instance, we'll go here and let's say I wanted to create something with decent edge loops. I'm going to, I grab the circle and I press Alt and Shift together. That'll let me kind of expand. Alt, Shift. Alt will center it. And then shift will hold it as a circle together. But what we could do, let's go like that. Shift click. Kind of bring this in a little bit. Bring this one in a bit. Bring this edge up. And then what I can do is just control C, control V. And then just bring it in. And then control C, control V. And bring it in. Now I may want it to be more circular. So let's just maybe add the circle like this. Shift alt. There. So I'm going to just use my pen tool to draw through it. Unless I want to be super precise, and I can use my polygonal pen tool. So there and there. Now what's interesting about, what's cool about this is we could go like this, for instance. This, I, I want to make sure I have enough detail. Like, I think it's not going to be enough if I just go like this. But we want actually, I'm going to use my polygonal tool because it's a little too messy. 
control click here, straight through, and then up and out, down, out, okay. And then my edges, or these are my corners. Now what you can do is if you've done one of these, you can just select the whole thing, control C, control V, control T, and then move it to another one. And then you can scale it as you wish. And if you want, you can even use the mesh warp tool to make it fit more. So you can have this sort of circular shape and just re reform it if you really want to have something that you can turn into spheres. But I didn't really care. So because of that, what I did is I just named, I made two paths with circles on them and I named them exactly the same as the layer. So I copied light blooms, for instance, and I created a path called light blooms and I just named it exactly like that. So that will make the linear mesh generator associate all three of these meshes with these layers and make a mesh for it. So we don't have to run the exporter. Cool, so I'm gonna show that file opening up in MayanX.